Hello, pre-calculus students. In this lesson, we're going to learn about linear programming. We're going to take what we learned in our lesson on linear inequalities, and we're going to apply it to some practical problems. In theory, you've already um, read ahead to learn what it is to look for in this lesson, because as I pointed out previously, this is not the world's easiest lesson. So having said that, let's get started. The goal of linear optimization, I'm sorry, linear programming is optimization. We want to maximize or minimize something. We might want to maximize profit or minimize the time it takes to perform some task or minimize cost. And we're going, as long as all of our um, equations involved are linear, which means they're all x, y, z, whatever to the first power, we can do this. The two big things to look for in linear programming are your constraints and your objective function. What's limiting us? For instance, maybe we're gonna make two types of cookies. Maybe we're gonna make chocolate chip cookies and snickerdoodles. Well, chocolate chip cookies take um, this long to prepare, so time is a constraint and they take this long in the oven, so oven time is a constraint. And um, you know, snickerdoodles take a different amount of time to prepare and a different amount of time in the oven. So we can graph all that, and then maybe what we'd want to maximize is what's our profit going to be on selling cookies? What, how many cookies of each type should we produce in order to maximize profit or to minimize cost? So. In that example, the constraints would have to do with the um, preparation time and the cooking time, the oven time, and the objective function would have to do with, oh, missed that. And the objective function would have to do with um, maximizing profit or minimizing cost. Now, the nice thing is that if our objective function is linear, and that's all we're going to be working with in this lesson then the maximum value of the function will occur at a vertex of that convex polygonal region hmm. that we've talked about in previous lessons. Um, so will the minimum um, objective function value. It will also occur at a vertex, um, probably a different vertex, but still, the objective function um, will be maximized at one vertex and minimized at another. So first thing we would have to do in this example is identify our variables. In the example I gave you, it would be um, X could be the number of chocolate chip cookies and Y would be the number of snickerdoodles that we're gonna make. Then we have to identify our constraints from the word problem. And the word problem I gave you, there would be some preparation time per cookie and then there is some cooking time per cookie or per batch. Then we want to graph all those inequalities, find out where the vertices are. Where, what is that convex polygonal region where all solutions are in that region are feasible? And then we want to find the vertices of that convex polygonal region. And we want to substitute the X and Y values of those vertices into this objective function. In our example, perhaps that objective function had to do with profit. Perhaps it had to do with um, cost, minimizing cost, maximizing profit. And then the key thing is you want to answer the appropriate question. If I ask how many of each cookie will maximize profits, then I'm asking you what is the value of X and what is the value of Y that will maximize profits? Maybe I don't care how many of each. Maybe I just want to know what would that maximum profit be. In other words, after you take that X and Y value, substitute it into here, what is that maximum profit? So there are some graphs in the textbook that you um, should have taken a look at. In this case, 
Um, we've graphed a, a bunch of constraints and the feasible region, our convex polygonal region is this one. And as it's pointed out just above, to find the maximum value of that objective function, substitute each of these vertices into the objective function and see which number comes out the biggest. Here's another one where we've graphed some constraints. So here are the constraints. Here is the feasible region. So X is greater than or equal to zero. Here's X equal to zero and we shade everything to the right of it. Note, remember, I just drew little arrows so we don't have, you know, well, in this case, four different types of shading going on. <clears throat> y is greater than or equal to zero here's y equal to zero and we're going to shade above it anywhere in here satisfies all four of these constraints it was at the bottom of this same page where we talked about why the maximum and minimum value is going to occur at a vertex and you could see that if maybe if this line was parallel to this one that any point along here could be a maximum or a minimum depending on what the function is. Here are four constraints. And Oh, and then don't forget X is greater than zero and Y is greater than zero. That's um, two more constraints that we often find in the real world because you can't have a negative number of cookies. So we had, we actually have six constraints here creating this feasible region and we substitute each of those data points, each of these vertices into our function here and find the minimum value. Now again, anywhere along this line in this particular problem, you're going to get a maximum of 12. So it could be here, it could be here, actually anywhere along that line, because again, your objective function will be parallel to, to that. So sometimes we have what's called an unbounded region the limits are like this but it goes on forever so depending on the um, objective function you could either get a maximum or a minimum at these points but probably not both um, it might be you know your if it goes on forever out here x is you know goes to infinity y goes to infinity if your objective is like f of x y is equal to x plus y well, obviously that's gonna be a maximum of infinity. So all you're gonna get is a minimum over here at one of these points. Another one where we have a um, feasible region that's graphed. And then a last one where we have an unbounded region. So let's start with um, one where I give you the constraint. So this is kind of like the um, linear inequalities we were doing. If you um, write these down, we'll go over this um, in class. So here are the constraints. Here's our objective function. So what I'm gonna ask you to do in class is to graph these constraints, determine the vertices, then we're gonna take those X and Y coordinates from the vertices, substitute them into this objective function. And then I wanna know what is the maximum value of this objective function and at what X, Y coordinate or what X, Y point does it occur? So write this down and then we'll go over it in class.
<clears throat> so this is such a kind of an intense subject that that is the world's briefest introduction to linear programming. I want to most of this instruction to be kind of you know, in person, in class. Because of that, that's all I have for you in this video. Have a great day.